Welcome in to Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in. Carolina Panthers. They're in the midst of a very tumultuous situation. Head coach fired. Defensive coordinator fired. Team is in shambles at this point. The quarterback situation is a mess. They look like potentially the worst team in football right now. Certainly one of the more difficult situations around the league right now. Is there a potential for a fire sale now that the Panthers are going to be moving in a different direction uh, at head coach and and potentially in many other places within this regime, within this organization? Um, This is a team, the Panthers, that only have four draft picks in 2022 after mishandling some quarterback situations over the last couple years. So at the very least, I do think it's possible that the Panthers are willing to part ways with one of their more talented young players in exchange for some premium draft capital. We all know the Jaguars and Panthers, they've been active trade partners in recent years, completing two trades with each other over the last two seasons. And look, it is entirely possible that the Panthers stand pat And early rumblings out of Carolina do suggest they're not looking to move on from any of their young stars. Uh, But if the Jaguars want to be the best they can be in 2022 and beyond, should they make the Panthers an offer they can't refuse? There are several young stars on that roster that the Jaguars should probably have some keen interest in. We're going to take a look at some of those players, take a look at if it makes sense for the Jaguars to pursue them or not. In just a moment, I'd like to remind you to please follow me on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo, Generation Jaguar, at Generation Jag. Please like and subscribe on YouTube, and if you want to support the channel further, go pick up a new hat or shirt at GenJag.com. You can become a channel member as well. We've got links in the description below. All right, so taking a look at some of these Panthers players that I think some teams have expressed interest in already and, and will continue to do so. Stud wide receiver DJ Moore, he's eclipsed 1,100 yards in three straight seasons uh, despite not having great quarterback play. He is a three-level threat, can get it done on all three levels of the field, and he's only 25 years old. He did ink a new contract, paying him about $20 million per year uh, this offseason, so he certainly does come with a, a big price tag from a salary cap standpoint. Um, beyond 2022, but the Jaguars would be able to afford him right now because uh, the Panthers had to pay all the guaranteed money already and they've paid and will continue to pay his salary as long as he is a member of the Panthers. So I think the Jaguars should be able to acquire DJ Moore uh, with no big issue in 2022 cap. In 2023, this is a team the Jaguars are that will need to Uh, move some money around, renegotiate some things, and uh, massage the cap a bit regardless of if they acquire DJ Moore or not. So I don't think that is a major uh, roadblock for the Jaguars. Edge rusher, Brian Burns. A pass rush menace. He's racked up 162 pressures and 29 and a half sacks in just under three and a half seasons as a pro. He is only 24 years old, former Florida State Seminole, hell of a young pass rusher. You've also got Derek Brown, who he's a behemoth on the interior at defensive tackle, and he would be a clear upgrade for the Jaguars' run defense and defense as a whole. Um, He's only 24 years old as well. Uh, His impact on the passing game, I'm not sure, is worth a, a a premium draft pick, but I do think if you're just looking at it in a vacuum, does Derek Brown upgrade your roster? No question about it. Again, Panthers have very little draft capital in 2023 and 2024. Nine total draft picks, only four picks next year. The Panthers might be down to move on if they could fetch an early round pick or two, and the Panthers themselves are in the red when it comes to 2023 cap space, so Rather than continuing to pay DJ Moore or potentially having to sign Derek Brown or Brian Burns to a big new contract, trading one or multiple of those young high-value players could be in the cards for Carolina, again, because of their lack of draft capital, 
their lack of salary cap space in 2023. And for the Jaguars, in my opinion, now is the time to spend big. Your quarterback is on a rookie contract. You have the ability to afford legit pieces over the next couple of years thanks to that rookie contract for Trevor Lawrence. And yes, as I mentioned, the Jaguars can afford all three of these players on the 2022 cap. In 2023, as I mentioned before, they're already going to have to massage things and move money around and potentially move on from some starters. Um that are not performing at the highest level, adding any one of these players does nothing to change that. And beyond 2023, looking at 2024, the Jaguars have an extremely healthy salary cap situation. I would probably be the most in on Brian Burns, but DJ Moore is right there for me. Both of these players, I think, are stars in this league. I think had they been drafted to bigger markets to teams that have not been a total dumpster fire over the last few years, that these would be even bigger names and and be looked at as even bigger stars. I think they're both underrated, quite frankly. But anytime you can acquire a player of their caliber that will massively impact the passing game, again, DJ Moore, a legitimate number one wide receiver. Brian Burns, a legitimate number one edge rusher. Anytime you can get a player like that that's going to impact the pass, I think you have to think long and hard about it. I'd be willing to give up valuable draft resources in a trade for either of these players, including the Jaguars' 2023 first-round pick, which is currently slated at 16 overall. You're basically paying a little extra to get your first-rounder in the building right now, get them working in this scheme, and you already know you have the ability to, Uh, you already know they have the ability, both Brian Burns and DJ Moore, to thrive in this league. It's not a guessing game. You don't have to question their work ethic. You've seen them grow over the last few years, despite not being in good situations. And the reason I'm slightly higher on Burns is when you look ahead at 2023, the Jaguars' third and fourth best pass rushers, Dewan Smoot and Arden Key, they're both on expiring contracts. And imagine rolling out a top three pass rush trio that includes Josh Allen, Brian Burns, Trayvon Walker over the next couple years. I mean, that could be lethal. Just giving Mike Caldwell those toys to play with up front would be, would be a sight to see. But ensuring that Trevor has top flight weapons is also a no-brainer, which is why DJ Moore makes, t- uh, makes a ton of sense for the Jaguars. So again, if the Jaguars could land either DJ Moore or Brian Burns, I think it would be a potential home run for the franchise, and and I think it it would make make sense from a roster construction standpoint. It would make sense from a salary cap standpoint, and uh, they would be massive upgrades. Burns is a stud pass rusher. Moore is a physical wideout, great speed, quickness route running prowess and he excels at the catch point he would easily be the Jaguars best receiver and I think Brian Burns would be the Jaguars best or second best pass rusher who cares at this point if 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 uh Josh Allen Trayvon Walker and Brian Burns are your top three you're in good shape I'm normally more of a build through the draft type of guy but because the Jaguars have so few draft picks from prior to 2021 still on the roster They are in a position to be buyers and to be paying some young players their second contract because they're not paying the guys that they've drafted themselves. Um, And I do believe that the roster in Jacksonville is close to being talented enough to make a run on things this year in 2022. And of course, that's going to require Trevor taking steps in the right direction. I, I think he already has done that, and I think he will continue to do so. Two poor outings do not define a career or even a season if you're a young quarterback. But the bottom line is, I'd be in on acquiring DJ Moore or Brian Burns for premium draft capital. When it comes to Derrick Brown, he's a well-balanced player, but I'm just not sure the impact on the passing game is enough to give up a premium draft pick. We'll see how it all plays out. As of right now, the reporting is that the Panthers are not interested in moving on from any of these players. But again, you dangle that first-round pick in front of them, that tune could, could, 
could change pretty quickly. We'll see how it all plays out. What would you want to do? Would you would you like the Jaguars to pursue either of these players for premium draft capital for a potential first round pick? Or do you think the Jaguars should kind of stand pat, maybe go for a lower end investment somewhere else on the roster? Let me know in the comments below, or you can hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo, Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. Hit that notification bell. If you want to support the channel further, again, check out genjag.com. Get some new Duval gear. You can also become a channel member. We've got links in the description below. Thanks for tuning in, Duval.